Yes, sir. My trigger back up in this thing, man. Today, we'll be diving into some more mysterious oddities, man. Today, I'm reacting to some creepy TikToks that'll leave you stunned. But before we hop into that, man, go ahead and spam that like button right now so we can run the numbers up on the algorithm. And you ain't gotta think about it later. And if you haven't already, man, go ahead and hit that sub button, man. Sub up. Join the family. I promise this is the most lit and active community on YouTube, period, man. And to everybody who's already subbed up, I appreciate each and every one of you guys for helping me build this community from the ground up. But with that being said, guys, let's hop straight into the video. Something strange is going on with Beyonce. There is a strange conspiracy that Beyonce is using the souls of music icons to feed her success. Well, you see, when she started her I Am World Tour in 2009, Michael Jackson died. Then with her The Miss Carter Show Tour in 2012, we lost Whitney Houston. Subsequently with her On The Run Tour in 2014, we lost Bobby Womack and Prince in 2016 as she embarked on her Formation World Tour. Now, it might seem like a coincidence, but as she announced her Renaissance World Tour in 2023, the world lost Tina Turner. Furthermore, she has always been the one to pay tribute to these lost icons. I highly doubt that she has anything to do with that, but based on how those dates line up, I can see how somebody could draw that conclusion. Wow. There's a portal above me. Dennis noticed it. It's a complete circle. It's got one sun there. I blew an O. Another sun. He blew an O. I'll tell you what you blew. But yeah, this is up. What the? Yeah. Did you get the whole thing in your picture or what? It's too big. But it's a perfect. It's too big. I'm not sure if they're using some type of filter or not, but the fact that it's a perfect circle tells me that it's not natural, man. Let me know what you guys think that is. NASA just locked four volunteers in a 1,700 square foot habitat that simulates Mars, and they're going to be in there for the next 378 days. Sunday, June 25th marked the start of Mission 1 of NASA's Crew Health and Performance Exploration Analog, aka CHAPIA. The participants, which include a research scientist, a structural engineer, an emergency medicine physician, and a microbiologist, were selected from a pool of applicants to be a part of the first of three simulated Mars missions, each a year long. The crew members will live and work in the simulated Mars habitat at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. Throughout their stay, the group will participate in crop growth, simulated spacewalks, habitat maintenance, and science experiments. They will also face a range of challenges and environmental stressors to simulate a real-life human mission. NASA says the goal of the mission is to, quote, assess human health and performance in relation to Mars-relevant resource limitations in isolation and confinement. This could mean that they're actually getting closer to sending humans to Mars because 378 days is intense. <laughs> there he is, he's on it. Whatever was in the second clip looked vicious. I never want to find out what that is. I don't know of anything that can make the sky go from nighttime to morning in an instant like that. So I was on Twitter this morning and saw this post. Go on Google Earth and try to get a measurement of Antarctica. It won't do it because it's a ring around us. So naturally I ran straight to Google Earth. I screen recorded everything I did. I sped it up because I really wanted to capture the shape of this wall. I mean, continent. Now to cover all my bases, this is what I did next. Mm -hmm. 
I could find the perimeter in the middle of the ocean, middle of Africa, and it didn't matter where I put the points. Right in the middle of the continent. Now this got me thinking, why don't we journey up to the North Pole? You know, right there in the middle. I'm like speechless. So while I was sitting here pondering all this and being speechless, I went, holy shit. No matter where you set the points, it always had these little spots, or a spot, missing. North Pole. Kind of like a little missing puzzle piece. The missing piece of the circle. Anyways, it's all a big conspiracy theory anyways. It looks like they're taking a flat 2D image and wrapping it over a 3D sphere to create this map, but maybe Google is trying to tell us something. Because I was just cooking me some rice and like i was looking at myself in the reflection you know what the f yes i don't even know if orkin can handle a roach that big bro she just need to move out i was just sent a clip of two people discussing what would happen during a 100 percent power outage i want you to check out the clip and then let me know if you've been experiencing anything strange like power outages or connection issues recently what does it look like if our power grid goes down. So it really becomes almost zombie apocalypse. And it's horrific because we think about loosening the rule of law. And so we have George Carlin, you know, a clip from, you know, one of his comedy tours in a movie. And he says, you can't count on the police or the National Guard. They'll be at home protecting their own family. And that's exactly true. Even now, if I lose power for a short period of time, it's difficult. So a global outage that lasts for months would be devastating. Oh my God. Oh my God. This rod is terrifying enough without a cable snapping, so I know they were shook. This is probably one of the creepiest fish in the ocean. It's called the monkfish. They get really big. This is a small one. This is the first one we've caught this year. It's got little feet. I don't know if you can see it, but his eyes like glow green. He's got his wings out. <laughs> Pretty weird fish. They actually have a little lure, like off Finding Nemo, like the angler fish. They dangle their lure in front of their mouth and attract little fish. When the little fish come in, they eat them. But he's actually got another set of teeth in his throat. He's got a bunch of gnarly looking teeth up here in the top of his mouth, but also back in his throat. Now hear me out. What if we just gave him a snack and let him go? Ow! Nobody showed me this came from our oceans. I would think this was a real extraterrestrial. This baby sun is actually a demon. Let me explain. Many people claim that the baby sun in the Teletubby TV series is pure evil. The theory is backed up with little to no evidence, but it is said that if you look closely at the beginning of each episode, the baby sun rises and later expands. In a split second, a demon face can be seen. I personally don't see it, but can you see it? I've always felt a little uneasy about the baby sign, so maybe this is why. Have you ever wondered about the mysterious passing of director Stanley Kubrick? Hey guys, Mystery Chick here. Let's talk about it. Viewer discretion is advised. Stanley Kubrick was an American film director, producer, screenwriter, and photographer. The Shining and the movie Eyes Wide Shut are the two most recognizable films directed by Stanley Kubrick. Eyes Wide Shut is the filmmaker's last film before he passed away in 1999 from a heart attack. 
The fact that Stanley passed away before the film could be released to the public definitely raises my eyebrows. The film Eyes Wide Shut exposes secret societies. The exposure of the elite might have ruffled a few feathers. The director was asked by his colleagues to cut out certain parts of the film, but Stanley refused. Individuals that are members of a secret society want to keep things quiet. The film has even grown a following with the Hollywood elite. Doja Cat had an eyes wide shut themed birthday party. Very strange. When this movie came out, all of this stuff was still being done behind closed doors. So I could see this movie definitely ruffling the wrong person or person's feathers. <laughs> You gotta have nerves of steel to work out at sea like that, bro. Respect to all the sailors, cause not me. Ever heard of the phantom time hypothesis? It's a theory that suggests we've been living a lie. The hypothesis is a historical conspiracy theory proposed by German historian Heribert Illig in 1991. According to Illig, we are not living in the 21st century, but rather in the 18th century. Sounds crazy, right? The theory suggests that the early Middle Ages, 614 through 911 AD, never happened and were fabricated by the Holy Roman Emperor Otto III, Pope Sylvester II, and possibly the Byzantine Emperor Constantine VII. They allegedly altered the existing calendar to place themselves at the special year of 1000 AD, creating a phantom time of 297 years that never existed. Illig's hypothesis is based on the scarcity of archaeological evidence that can be reliably dated from the years 614 through 911, the perceived inadequacies of radiometric and dendrochronological methods of dating this period, and the over-reliance of medieval historians on written sources. The phantom time hypothesis is widely dismissed by mainstream historians and scholars. It contradicts verifiable historical and archaeological data from around the world. And the Gregorian calendar we use today, introduced by Pope Gregory XIII in 1582, is widely accepted as accurate. So, what do you think? Are we living in a fabricated timeline? Time and calendars is something we came up with for convenience anyway, so they could have told us anything. I found another glitch in the Matrix. Check out my watch, Friday the 30th. The moment I move it here, look at it. It's Saturday the 1st. Put it away. 30th. Put it this way. It's the first, but it's not the first yet. Either his house is built on the border between two time zones or his bathroom is a wormhole. They need to pause all space research until they figure out what's going on with the oceans, bro. I feel like that's where all the mysteries are. Way too comfortable. Those look like mini cloud generators, bro. They're not even trying to hide it no more. In the 1920s, this device was banned by the FDA. It was taken outside of the clinics in which it was used and smashed to bits. 
The multi-wave oscillator was invented by a Russian-French engineer, George Lakovsky. This was an extremely popular treatment during the 1920s and 30s. Lakovsky's multi-wave oscillator consisted of a series of concentric rings or antennas connected to a high-frequency Tesla coil. When activated, the device emitted a wide spectrum of electromagnetic waves, including radio waves, microwaves, and infrared frequencies. According to Lakovsky, these waves would interact with the body's cells, promoting health and vitality by restoring their natural resonance. This device gained significant attention and popularity, particularly in Europe and the United States. Lakovsky claimed the device could rejuvenate cells, enhance the immune system, and even destroy cancer growths by simply resonating the cells with their natural healing frequencies. I can think of one industry in particular that would have lost a lot of money if this would have ever came out. And I'm pretty sure you know what industry I'm talking about. 2023 just gets even crazier. This is not good, why now? Why now? There is this virus called CCHF, that's what it means. And you found in Africa, that's basically where it's been for the last long time. And it is a terrible virus. It's bad. The survival rate of it of only 40%, which isn't good. What's worse is now it's spread to all of these places and has now been found in the UK. Spread through ticks, these little guys which are most likely living on your pets sometimes, live in bushes and on the top of tall grass and they jump on your animals and yeah. Now ticks normally aren't that bad, you can get Lyme's disease, but you can get through that. This, not so much. Now so far there's only been a couple of cases in the UK, but scientists and the WHO are already saying that this could be the next which is flipping terrifying. Thanks. This really isn't good. Hopefully nothing will happen, but hit that follow button and I will keep you updated. It's like as soon as we start to relax from the last thing, we got something else to worry about, bro. This is exhausting. There is something hidden at the bottom of the Grand Canyon that the highest authorities don't want you to discover, and its existence be unsuspected. In the 1850s, the Grand Canyon was used for gold extraction. When people started exploiting it, the gold index plummeted due to the excessive amount of gold found there. It was subsequently closed and declared a sanctuary so that nobody could access it and take a massive amount of gold. However, there was a man named Seth Tanner who was an explorer. He explored a cave in the Grand Canyon and claimed to have seen ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs inside one of these caves. His theory suggests that the Grand Canyon holds the lost city of El Dorado, the city of gold that has never been found. The theory suggests that it is literally located in the Grand Canyon at the bottom of its caves. The reason why those in power would try to keep it secret is that it would cause the gold price to collapse. But recently, supporters of this theory have decided to find out the truth and have gone to the Grand Canyon. It seems like they found something more than just go down in those caves for them to restrict access like that. Good luck if you fall in there. Taylor Swift's similarities with Zena Lave, the daughter of founder of the Church of Satan. There is a conspiracy that Taylor is Zena clone created to continue the satanic agenda. After acting like a virgin Christian girl, Taylor lured young girls as her fans under her influence before implementing her ideology. Someone claimed that this is Becky, a girl that has accidentally passed away after weird accident. And then this album front page. What do you think it is? Taylor Swift performances and videos are becoming more and more evident of the satanic influences, with mostly young girls being the foundation of her fan base spouses to rituals, witchcraft, black magic, and occultism. Doesn't she look like a witch during her offerings and rituals? Here is like she does some sort of spells. Very dark entry, pay attention to the serpent in a second. tell from different videos her concerts definitely seem uncharacteristically dark and when you put those pictures side by side there's no physical discrepancies but let me know what you guys think about this one Check the house, guys. Hello! 
is it just me or does it seem like these tornadoes are getting larger by the day? That was like a quarter mile wide. A roller coaster has fallen apart in Charlotte, North Carolina. Maybe that's an over exaggeration, but this is Fury 325 in Carowinds. And as you can see, it has a major boo boo, a major crack support. This was taken yesterday, June 30th, as was this video. What makes this super strange is that there was evidence of a crack forming about a week ago on June 24th. Somebody took this picture. It's unclear who and why they didn't report to guest services about it. So this ride is massive. It crosses two states, North Carolina, South Carolina. The station is all the way over here and we assume that the crack support is over here near the entrance. It's a popular ride too. It always ranks number one in the polls and I am just in shock that this has happened. Stay tuned for updates. This is exactly why I got trust issues with amusement park rides. Can someone explain this super strange glitch that was caught on live TV in Chile? Check this out. <laughs> Even the other news anchor was confused. Our government has been working with aliens all this time. There is a conspiracy theory called the Serpo Alien Exchange Program that suggests that the elites have been in contact with the aliens for a really long time. Well, you see, according to this theory in the 1940s, a UFO crash in New Mexico led to the government recovering a living extraterrestrial that came from the planet Serpo, located in the Zeta Reticuli star system, some 39 light years away. This extraterrestrial known as the Ebens started facilitating contact between Earth and Serpo, teaching humans about their technology, including their light speed propulsion technology, basing themselves in New Mexico, a place where the UFO sightings might not just be a hoax anymore. It was also alleged that 12 humans were actually sent to live in Serpo among the Ebens for decades. And while the actual purpose of it is still unknown, the question we should be asking is, how much more do we not know? If we didn't know that. If this is true, then they've been here for decades. They probably got way more bases now. Not me finding out that there was another deep sea craft exploring the bottom of the ocean at the same time that we were hearing about everything going on with the Titan submersible. Yeah, and it was on a $1.5 million expedition. But this one wasn't looking for the Titanic. This one was looking for a UFO that fell from outer space into the ocean in 2014. You can't make this stuff up. And I want to tell you what they found on this very expensive mission. But first, what are we doing here? Why is everyone at the bottom of the ocean all of a sudden? I guess now we're searching for UFOs, or I should say USOs. Because correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe USO stands for Unidentified Submerged Object. Yeah, that's a thing. Although when speaking of USOs, I believe people use it to refer to UFOs that like dip in and out of the water or come out of the water or something like that. So this might be a little bit different. This whole expedition is being led by Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb. Him and his team are looking for debris of a meteor that fell into the ocean in 2014. But they don't believe that it was a meteor. No, no. They think that it was a UFO that crashed into the ocean. In particular, one that fell into the waters off the coast of Papua New Guinea, about 50 miles off the coast. Avi has a boat, a team, and some underwater sleds. Sleds like this one you see here. The sled is mounted with magnets, cameras, and lights. And apparently something to pick stuff up off of the bottom of the ocean floor. And they are searching 1.7 kilometers down, which is a little bit over a mile. Apparently when this object crashed into the ocean in 2014, it was too fast to be bound to the sun. His words, not mine. And he said it was made of something stronger than iron. And guess what? They found it. Or at least like a little piece of it, and he's holding it right there. On their mission that is still ongoing from what I understand at this point, they found small metallic wires and small little spheres. These spheres are made of magnesium, iron, and titanium, but no nickel. And apparently that's significant because it resembles human-made alloys. But they're looking for a bigger piece. I'm assuming they want to find something like this down there? And he says he believes this is the first time that humans are putting their hands on interstellar material. Why would you touch that? I don't know you guys, I don't know, I don't know. You would think a discovery of this magnitude would be front page news everywhere, but I haven't heard it mentioned once, which makes this more suspicious. Man, I don't know what's in that thing, but whatever's in it is going 
that tank don't look like it's gonna hold whatever is in there bro i would not be filming i'll be running but with that being said guys that was the video thank you for coming to kick it with me let me know what you guys thought about these creepy tiktoks in the comments below and until next time y'all take care of yourself